in this video we will discuss problem number one from the 2021 AP Stats Free Response Set. This number one, as most versions of number one do, involves exploring data. And the data that we have access to in this particular problem is presented in uh, frequency table form as well as dot plot form. But if you check out a little description of the data, we're talking about the length of stay in hospital after a particular treatment something that's interest of interest to the patient, the hospital, and insurance providers. So of particular interest are the unusually short or long lengths of stay. So we've got a random sample of 50 patients who received the treatment. We have the length of stay in number of days recorded for each patient. We've got the results in the frequency table as well as the dot plot. So in part A, we're asked to determine the five number summary for the distribution of length of stay. Five number summary are the five values that you need to have in order to build a box plot. So they don't ask us to build the box plot here. They just ask us for the five values that we would need to have access to in order to actually construct it. So I need to know the minimum. Well, the minimum is pretty easy to figure out. I'm just going to look at the table here. The smallest length of stay for whatever this procedure was was five days. Uh, the maximum length of stay is 21 days so minimum and maximum pretty easy to identify the other values you will have to do a little bit more work to determine you need to know the lower quartile the median and the upper quartile so i'm going to start by finding the median so i know that i have 50 people within this data set and that's going to indicate to me that the 25th and 26th data points are going to share the middle spot. So I would need to find the mean of the 25th and 26th data points in order to establish my median. Now, I can try to do this with the dot plot. I think it's actually a little easier to do it with the frequency table here. I'm going to start at the low end. So I know I've got four of my total patients here plus another 13 here. So I'm up to 17 total. Well, if I add another 14 onto 17, that takes me to 31 of my 50 patients already. So that tells me that the 26th and 27th spots are both going to be shared uh, by the seven day length of stay. So I know my median is seven. And then if I drew a divider between the 25th and 26th data points, I'd have 25 values at the low end. I'd have 25 values on the upper end. And I would have the 13th and the 38th data points being what determines the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So the 13th data point, if I use the same general procedure, well, I've got four data points here, plus an additional 13 pushes me past 13, clear to 17. So I know that my 13th patient, the length of their stay was six days. There's my lower quartile. And then if I'm working for my 38th patient, I can continue to work forward. We already had this added on a minute ago. That got us up to 31. And if I add an additional 11, that takes me up to 42. So that tells me the 38th longest stay. I think that's the wrong way for me to say it since I'm working from the short end. The 38th shortest stay is eight days. So I've got my five number summary and we are ready to move on to part B. So part B asks us to consider two rules for identifying outliers, method A, method B. Method A is going to be 1.5 times the interquartile range rule. Method B is going to be the two standard deviations rule. So for method A, the 1.5 IQR rule, you need to first establish your interquartile range. So if you go back to part A, take the upper quartile and the lower quartile and find a difference, you get two. If you multiply that by 1.5, 2 times 1.5 is going to give you 3. And if I go down by 3 from the lower quartile, that gives me 3 as my lower boundary for outliers. And if I go up by 3 from the upper quartile of 8, that gives me 11 as my upper boundary for outliers. So they tell us to use method A to try to figure out if we have any outliers, justify your answer. We've got our work shown. We've got our lower and upper boundaries for outliers clearly established. 11 is the upper outlier, upper outlier boundary, excuse me. Hospital says exceeding that number of days are 11. And if we go back and look at the data set, there are two that exceed 11. The length of 12 days and the length of 21 days would qualify as outliers under method A's test for outliers. 
The second part of part B says the mean length of stay for the sample is 7.42 days. Standard deviation is 2.37. Using method B, determine if there are any potential data points that are outliers for the length of stay. Justify your answer. So I would go up by two standard deviations from the mean. I would go down by two standard deviations from the mean. That gives me an upper boundary of 12.16 and a lower boundary of 2.68. The only outlier that the only value that would qualify as an outlier with this method for establishing boundaries would be the, the length of stay of 21 days. Right? 12 sneaks in just under this upper boundary. So it qualified as an outlier in method A's test. It doesn't qualify as an outlier in method B's test. Last part of this problem asks us to explain why method A might identify more data points as potential outliers than method B for a distribution that is strongly skewed to the right. So for a distribution that's strongly skewed to the right, especially one that has pretty obvious visual outliers on the upper end of the data, the median in the quartiles are not going to be affected by the skewness of the data or by the outliers that the data possesses on that upper end. So since the median and standard deviation, or excuse me, since the median and interquartile range are less resistant to skewness and outliers than the mean and standard deviation are, we end up with a lower upper boundary for outliers, qualifying more values as outliers in method A, but the, the mean and the standard deviation, they are not resistant to skewness and outliers. The mean is driven higher, the standard deviation is driven higher, that gives us a higher boundary for outliers on the upper end, qualifying few values on the upper end of the data set as outliers. So I know I didn't read what I have typed here word for word, but you'd want to say something along those lines in order to satisfy the requirements for Part C.